I'd like to thank you, Minister, uh, for coming in. Um, uh, certainly, I, I'm confident. Whatever with your confidence, I, I'm confident that you uh, have managed to bring all the all the different parties in the executive table uh, behind the budget. But we also aware there's a really serious consultation process going on at the minute. Large public response, uh, and I'm, I'm confident as well that between now and the budget being agreed, we can make some changes which may ease the pain, in particular in relation to the arts and and, and the further. Education. Um, I'm new to this, of course, but I, I, so I, you, you'll forgive me for not reading the speech before I was elected to this august body. But any speech which has Mandela uh, in there, as well as JFK, uh, there has to be something right about it. Um, <laughs> but talk two two issues I wanted to discuss. One is the, the change fund, um, and you know, uh, I think we're all sympathetic to the idea that we should set money aside for uh, projects which will reduce expenditure in the time ahead and help us to do things in a wiser manner. But I wonder, given the short period that the departments have to bid for this money, given, I'm sure, the temptation among departments to actually bid for monies which will replace monies they're losing, uh, is it not possible to take uh, some money from the change fund now to make it a smaller change fund and to give some uh, relief, I suppose, to our friends in the uh, in DECAL and, and Dale? Uh, just before you answer that, Minister, maybe you could just rehearse the two figures that you give uh, at the start, one was for the uh, extent of the cuts going forward in real terms. Yeah. I think it was 1.5 billion, and the extent of the uh, reduction in, in, in the Treasury block grant. I think in the last four years, I think that may have been one one, one billion as well. But if you give me those two figures first, because yeah, I'm aware the pressures you're under. If you go, if you go back, with the real terms reduction in year for 15-16 was 1.6 percent. Um, in terms of lost spending power, so not keeping pace with the block grant, not keeping pace with inflation, um, it's around uh, one and a half billion has been lost between 11 and 15. Um, with actually the sequencing of that later and later in that period, so that's why this year, compared to previous years in the 11 to 15 budget, has been more difficult. Moving forward, the projections are again, it's these, this is a real terms figure. Uh, it's one, it's 13 percent. I think it's, it's sort of roughly. Was it five, five, and three? I think is the, the sequencing of that of that over the next three years. Now that's that's a real terms reduction. So it was over the yeah. So it's three point uh, yeah. So it's it's significant amount uh, over that period, and that's at a UK wide level. Now a, an incoming administration of whatever political hue could take a different decision. Um, you could see decisions taken to protect various areas of public spending in England, which would have positive Barnet consequences for Northern Ireland. But I think no matter what administration it is and what policy decisions they take in terms of spending, you're looking at reductions in spending in the block grant as well. Uh, if it was the full 13%, um, it's going to be around another billion pounds, roughly, um, out of our spending by the end of the day. And that's a lot. You take that over, over a decade. It's a budget of, started off as a budget of uh, over 10 billion in terms of resource expenditure, now down below 10 billion, and you're talking, you know, real prospect of another total 1 billion pounds coming off that. That's a lot of money for a little place like Northern Ireland to shed in, in a sh relatively short period of time. Uh, in, in terms of um, the change fund and how that might be used, um, now the, the intention. I've, I've had I've had this feedback I have to say from from some ministers chair where um, they said, well, could you not just Use the um, the 30 million and spread that out across departments. Um, it's a small amount of money; you can't do a terrible lot. It'd be better just, you know, carving that up. Now, if it was to carve that up amongst all of the departments, there'd be some. You know, you'd have health would nearly get 15 million of it. I'm sure, Jim would bite my arm off for that, but he would get nearly 15 million. Um, Education would get around three to four. Justice would get around three to four, and the rest would get tuppence halfpenny nearly. You know, um, so for some, it wouldn't make a huge amount of difference to their bottom line. It wouldn't shift their percentage reduction. Reduction a terrible. Lot. I, I, I could make a case. I could make a case um, for instead of it being thirty million, that it should actually be higher than that, because at a time whenever you're facing, and I made this clear to to, to ministers um, during negotiations around this, that uh, discussions around this, that. You know, at a time whenever you're facing reduced expenditure, that's whenever there's a temptation sometimes to just say, well, look, I've got a 5% cut, everything across the board is cut by 
Ministers need to look more critically, um, both in terms of reprioritising within their own budget and also sometimes stopping some things that they're doing. Because there are things that ministers, sorry, departments do that aren't working anymore, uh, that have failed, that are only achieving some of their outcomes and there is perhaps a better way to do it. Now, finding the better way to do something isn't always just as easy as turning one thing off and turning another thing on. It, it, it's, it requires an investment. And that's what the change fund is about. It's also about early intervention and prevention. It's also about trying to, and this is something I've, I've particularly learned over the last uh, 18 months in, in, uh, that I've been in post, that there are a lot of areas where we are getting very, very poor outcomes. And often, not always, but often the reason we are getting very, very poor outcomes is that no one single department takes ownership of the problem. So the problem might manifest itself uh, initially in one department, but resolving it there has an outcome somewhere else. So neither department really wants to take the load in terms of paying for that. So one of the criteria on the change fund is that it should also encourage collaboration between departments, because I find it difficult to get, say, well, I'm just using an example, justice and education to work together on something, or health and justice to work together on something. Whenever they're all facing pressures, they've all got less money. And if you just give them more money, they'll spend it on their own stuff, rather than things that produce better outcomes across the board. So there are criteria, strict criteria, are going to be applied to the, the change fund. Um, if those criteria are not met by the quality of the bids, and I, and I, I accept that there is, a, there is a weakness in the change fund in this sense, that there's a very short period of time for departments to come forward with bids. Um, I still think it is a good idea, and I, and I hope that everybody would agree that in principle it is a good idea. But if we do not get the quality of bids coming forward in the next number of weeks, then we'll obviously have to look at other options with it. Um, I, I wouldn't be yet in the position to say we're, you know, um, I, I don't think, I, I, I'm glad, I'm glad I, sh I, sh I share your optimism on, on many things, Martin. Um, I'm not maybe as, as optimistic that we will have bags of cash between now, appearing between draft and final budget that will allow us to sort of spread that out and ease a lot of the pressures. Uh, there may be some. I, I, I hope that there will be. Um, <coughs> just saying it's going to be incredibly difficult and not obvious to see where that is coming from. Um, we mentioned universities. Uh, and I, have, I met with the Dell Minister yesterday and had a very, very good conversation. Uh, and I've said publicly that I have some sympathy for the position that he finds in himself and I don't want to go into why he finds himself in the position that he is in. But it is, I have to say, the settlement within the budget that I am least satisfied with for a range of reasons. And now I think there's a lot of work that universities can and should be doing themselves. You know, they're not, they're not paupers by any means. Um, and we are trying to actively work with that, that sector. Um, on the arts issue, uh, again, I'm aware of, 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 of the issues that are around that. Um, and again, it's, it's a, a matter for the minister herself to, if she values the arts budget, and she is facing 10% reductions as well. Um, and it's going to be incredibly difficult <coughs> for not to offer some pain to that sector. But it, it is as much a matter for what are her priorities within her own departmental spend. Is it libraries? Is it arts? Is it what, what is it? Um, but that's a, it's a very good example of the, the, the difficult decisions that, that all ministers have to make in terms of prioritising within their, their budgets which are being constrained. Um, oh, I, 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 since, it was, since it was a long answer, Minister, I mean, I, I just, uh, just, just uh, to finish, um, I suppose one of the dangers of, of this uh, austerity agenda is that it hits confidence, that it stops people investing, that it stops people spending and so on. It's a, it's a danger that we face when we uh, have to cope with really uh, straightened budgets. And that's one of the reasons why I do think <coughs> those two areas really does amount to preventative spending. When you hit the arts, um, I think you hit tourism, you hit cultural uplift, you hit confidence in the city. And when you, when we, if we have to reduce the number of students, and, and you know the debate goes on, I think that would be difficult for investors to say well, we're still coming in when the universities can't produce these top class uh, business oriented or engineering students for itself. So, uh, so it's in the area of preventive spend, but, but I take on board what you're saying. Thank you. Okay.